Okay, so the way we're going to do this is we're going to create a, if you don't already have one, a new uh, AVD. So I'm going to go over here and say, I want to create a new AVD. I'm going to call it, for example, you know, Android 15 NDK specific. I'm going to target API level 15. Um, I'm going to go and say, I don't know, SD card 16 megabytes, and I'm going to change the resolution uh, to be, I don't know, half VGA. So that's, that's it. That's my AVD. I'm going to now create it and I'm going to go and create, start it up. So start, launch, and it'll take a little bit of time. And once it launches, I'm actually going to run my application as an Android application and observe what happens inside of the, um, over here, uh, we're going to type ADB logcat. Uh, of course, we have to make sure that this connects. It's going to take a little bit of time. Um, sometimes it takes longer than I would like, but so it's. I'll just have to restart this. There we go. Okay, so our device is now booting. It's not yet ready to accept our application, but it will in a moment. Uh, and then when it does, we'll be able to take a look at how it um, deploys our application and then, of course, how application actually runs or executes. So let's give it a little bit of time and then we'll, uh, we'll go back over here to Eclipse and test things out. Okay, so now I can close this, um, go back over here, and I should just double check this started. It did. Um, I need to go and relaunch re this, sometimes it exits. Um, so we're in business. And so now what I'm gonna do is come back and right click on this, say run as Android application. Now, if everything's done correctly, I see my libraries are here, my all my files compile. Um, this should sometimes today go and launch it. So it did, it says displaying activity. So I'm gonna go back here, unlock the device. Here it is. Um, it doesn't say much about, uh, you know, any anything with respect to JNI just yet. Uh, but I do wanna show you something before we go into actually running it. If I type ADB shell and I actually go into the data slash data slash uh, com.marcana.android.fibonacci-native, you'll notice that there's a directory here called lib. And if I go into that directory, ls-l, you'll notice that there is a library that happens to be ours. Now, the question is, which one is it? So which of these is the, you know, we built, essentially, we compiled three different versions. There's one here, one here, one here. So it just so happens to be this one because this particular emulator is, ru emulator is running on ARM v7. Um, I can test this out. I mean, I can go and say, for example, just look at the size and just comparing the size of that to the size of these other ones. So I can actually go and exit this and do an ls-l of lib Fibonacci orps um, arm um, dash v7 you'll see that that size and this size are exactly the same. Another another thing I could have done is I could have said ADB pull um, this file, so just to download it, so I can actually see which one is uh, being used. So I'm gonna copy paste that path in this. Okay, I'm gonna download it here into my current directory. So, whoops, um, hmm. oh, I have an extra, missing an extra slash here. Um, or extra libs, or lib, I should say. Okay, so now I have that file here temporarily, file, lib, Fibonacci, or libcom, do, 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 do. this is the file that I got, and it should say that it's, well, it just says arm, hmm, for some reason I thought it would say v 7 So, oh well, at least we know it's arm, um, and it should work. So, anyway, I'm going to go and delete it, uh, because I don't need it here. Um, and now I want to actually see what happens if I type ADB uh, lockout again. 
and clear the screen, wait for me to actually execute something. So for example, I can say right off the bat, give me a Fibonacci using native recursive 415, click on this, and it gives me that it's you know 610 in three milliseconds. And what's interesting is right now I can see um, as soon as I'm, I, I run this code, because my code tries to use fiblib, and fiblib has a static initializer, just to remind you, it's right here, that we added, and the static initializer says, I want to load this library. Because of this one line, Dalvik Virtual Machine goes and says, okay, let's go and find the library. It finds it in this folder. This is the, this, the path of this is what kind of pre, prefix, predefined. It goes and loads it. It doesn't find any sort of onload function, which we'll talk about in a moment, but now is able to actually bind to it. And, you know, as a result, is able to give us, the, give us the correct result. Let's compare this to the Java version. You know, does it, you know, does this produce the same result? If I do the NI, same result. Uh, if I do fib, whoops, uh, is it the same result? This one is not the same result as this. So somehow, I must have changed or implemented incorrectly. I guess I'm going to have to go and fix it. Okay, so let's take a look at our code. Um, we have it over here. Um, I realized that actually one thing I forgot to do is to make sure that this i goes all the way up to n, including n, not uh, to one less than n. So that's my mistake, missing this one equal sign. So I'm going to have to fix the same thing in the C version. Uh, I probably made the same mistake because I copy pasted the code, and I did. So say equals here as well. Now here's an opportunity for us to go and re redeploy it. So I'm going to go over here and type ndk build. So to recompile it, so I'll click on OK, that repackages it. And then um, I'm going to go, I usually like to go and type, to do refresh to make sure that Eclipse is aware of all the changes to all the files, because especially when I modify files from outside of Eclipse. And now I can go and rerun the same code. So let's see. Um, go back, click on OK here. It should redeploy. And so let's try this again. 15 for JR. Same thing over here. Oh, now we get the correct result. Okay. Perfect. Now, of course, if you try larger values like, you know, say 25, uh, this one will be extremely fast. It does it in, you know, essentially zero milliseconds. This one takes 14. This one takes zero, but uh, this one may take slightly more. Um, you know, all, more than half a second. So, and it goes, you know, very, very uh, uh, exponentially. Essentially, it gets more expensive as you increase this number. So don't use, you know, anything above, say, 35, uh, especially if you're using the recursive versions. Well, for the iterative ones, it doesn't really matter how high the number is. So anyway, uh, we now have a working version of our code base. Uh, we are able to invoke from Java uh, the native functions. Let's just kind of see this. Uh, this is essentially where we're invoking it. Now, uh, what's nice about this is the client code has no idea that it's actually talking to the you know, C code underneath the hood, nor does it care. All of that is essentially being abstracted by this you know, function that just happens to be marked native. And then the binding from this native function to the C implementation happens as a result of the correct naming of our functions and methods. So... Now that we know this, I wanted us to take a look at one more little feature, uh, actually two more features, but we'll start with one, and that has to do with logging. How do we know that this is actually working correctly? Um, so let's do a little bit of logging. Uh, 